Today we're going to build two waterproof power over Ethernet distribution hubs. Hey, welcome back to Advanced Geekery. My name is David Gewurz and today we're going to take power over Ethernet and stick it outside in these two waterproof distribution hubs. We're going to start with two plastic boxes meant for outdoor electronics use, drill the holes necessary to provide pass-throughs, build the units, and get them ready to go outside. This is all part of my revamping of my outdoor security camera system. My previous version used power over Ethernet, but stuck them in little boxes I dumped onto the ground, and dirt and crap grew all over them, and it made it impossible to maintain. So this time, I'm doing a redo and I'm going to mount these things on the wall. I have one already up and working, and these are the next two that are going to be able to distribute uh, another 10 feeds. Uh, technically, there's two, one, technically there's seven cameras going in here and three repeaters. So it'll come from one feed into the PoE box, from that feed to the next PoE box, and then the rest will be camera feeds. So there'll be another seven camera feeds in addition to the four I've already got up and running. So let's get started. This program is sponsored in part by the Advanced Geekery Weekly Newsletter. Want exclusive access to my latest ZDNet articles, behind the scenes updates on my projects, and must watch YouTube videos curated just for you? How about fascinating reads from around the web and a chance to have your own projects spotlighted? It's all in the newsletter. And the best part, subscribing is absolutely free. Don't wait. Click the link below to get your weekly issue and make it awesome. All right, let's get started taking a look at these Calypso cases. These are all plastic cases that are sealed and waterproof, and they're made out of a fairly robust plastic, as you'll see when I try to start drilling through them. You can see on the inside that they have gaskets to prevent water entry and um, a whole bunch of screw points and attachment points. This is for the grid that I'll install later on. They also have a very secure latching system as well as a place for a padlock so that you can keep this thing locked and make sure that nobody tampers with it when it's mounted outside. This is a 3D printed drilling template that I designed that would allow me to properly and evenly space the waterproof connectors that are used to pass through both the ethernet connection and power connection in, into the box. And what I did is I sized it so it would fit properly against the box and then taped it to the box to be able to do the drill holes. Now the drill holes are actually much larger than those that you see on the template and the reason is, is because I started with a much smaller drill hole, which made it much easier to sight and to drill through to start the hole. Drilled those holes, and then I'll go on to drill the much larger holes after. These are the power pass-through connectors, and they're bigger than the original holes, as you can see. While these are the Ethernet pass-through connectors, which are even bigger than those. And these are interesting because they... This part that I'm unscrewing now actually goes over the wire for the Ethernet, and then when the wire plugs in, if I can find it, when the wire plugs in, it plugs into that point, and then it passes through the box using the other connector, and those all required very large drill holes. When I started doing this, I, the first time I did this, I actually used these step drills, which proved to be really quite the challenge to both get accurate and to get through. They were a real fight, so I went off and bought drills that actually fit the size of these holes. This is a 15.5 millimeter drill bit used for the power pass-through, while the Ethernet pass-through connector uses a 20.5 millimeter drill bit. The drilling process takes a little bit of work because what winds up happening is that the blade actually cuts into the plastic and leaves plastic shards that get caught on the drill bit and then halt the drill bit as it's trying to drill through. So there's a lot of start and stop to be able to get the drill hole to go through. And for the smaller drill hole, it wasn't too bad. But as I started to do the ethernet pass-throughs, 
it became quite a challenge. I was able to, to deal with it just by very carefully drilling each hole and reciting in, practicing getting through it, but it definitely required a certain amount of careful touch to make it succeed. <laughs> This is the plastic mounting plate that goes inside the unit. As you can see, it has a whole bunch of holes and you could do all sorts of interesting things with it. It's set off from the back, so there's enough room to run wires and things like that. All I did was just simply screw it in because I'm going to be using outdoor Velcro to attach everything inside this. And I don't have anything that requires that much work, but still it's a very nice piece of construction. and. Uh, if you do get these boxes and use them for something else, it's a pretty useful piece of uh, gear here. You may notice a shirt change here, and that's because I needed to change after doing all that drilling. I got all those plastic shards all over me. I was covered head to toe in plastic shards, so I went ahead and changed. And then I went on and installed the pass-through for the power cable which was pretty straightforward. I did use a wrench to kind of secure it as I tightened it, but it went in very easily and uh, gave me a false sense that everything was going to go smoothly. Foreshadowing, it did not. Okay, to be clear, I carefully measured these pass-throughs before I bought the drill bit for it and I had an exact measurement. So of course, when they don't fit through, well, I wasn't expecting that. But proving that I do in fact have an engineering degree, my first reaction upon them not fitting through was to pick up a hammer and try to beat them into submission. This is a tried and true technique that unfortunately did not work in this case. So I had to go to a more nuanced and gentle approach, much to my frustration. I haven't really shown it on the video, but I'm actually building both boxes together so I've been alternating back and forth. And now I'm on the second box where I decided to actually use a file and file out the holes a little bit, which made it possible for me to get the uh, ethernet pass-throughs to fit fairly well. It was just a little bit um, disappointing that they didn't go directly with the drill bit, but apparently instead of a 20.5, it probably would have been better to have a 21 uh, millimeter drill bit, but still these did work and I'm able to install all of the pass through successfully. This was the first one. As you can see, it fits nicely. Well, nicely with a little extra filing anyway. There we go. Better. <laughs> The next part of the process is to take this outdoor Velcro and attach it to the power over Ethernet switches and their associated power supplies. Finally, it's time to remove the sticky from the Velcro and mount the power supply on the side of the unit and then mount the switch on the back of the unit and run the power connection from the power supply into the switch. And there we go. We now have these mounted and in place. Next up, it's just a matter of running the ethernet cables. Now in this case, there are two uplink cables going in, which are the two to your left. And one of them goes to the first point on the 
networked video recorder. And then the next one goes to the second box that I'm building. On the second box, it's only going to need one uplink cable, which is back to this box. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to be installing, as you can see, the remaining four Ethernet connectors that'll, that will actually power the four cameras. And that gets this box's networking capabilities done. And the only thing that is remaining is building out the actual power connector. And that should be a pretty straightforward process. So for this unit, I'm starting with just a regular computer power cord that I'm chopping the end off of, and I'm going to run the cable interface connector and out the other side, and I will attach a plug to it later. This particular unit is pretty close to where the power is, so I don't have to use a custom cord. For the other unit, I may have to use a custom cord, which is why I haven't built that out yet. The rest of the process is very straightforward. It's taking apart the power connector, stripping the outer wire, stripping the inner wires, and then attaching them to the screw mounts. So there you go. I've got two of these up and running. I'm going to mount the first one, get its cables all set up, run all the cameras to it, and then mount the second one, which is why there's no power cord on the second one, because I'm not exactly sure where it's going to land up. Uh, but there we go. For Advanced Geekery, my name is David Gewertz. Go out there and power something awesome. Oh, and the links to all the goodies will be down below. Have a great day. Bye-bye.